And breaking news on your screen, RBI has finally issued the payment bank guidelines. Remember, the draft guidelines for the payment bank had come out earlier in July. The final guidelines have come out. They say that eligible promoters for the real estate and corporate, the no, eligible no, no. promoters for real estate, cooperative and supermarket chain, okay, promoters can have joint ventures with banks for payment bank. Okay, I'm just straight going to okay, go to Lata. Lata no, for the not real estate at okay. all. Okay. So, Lata, right. first, let's just go one by one. Key highlights of the payment banks what are the details that have come out well so uh, actually everything has come out now and these are much awaited mm. the not very different from uh, the draft guidelines the guys who can uh, uh, key, um, start a payment bank are uh, telecom companies those who already have prepaid instruments you know mm. uh, those oxygen cards people like that uh, prepaid instrument issuers uh, individuals, no, NBFCs, uh, mobile companies, of course, supermarket mm. chains, uh, real sector cooperatives. Mm. Uh, uh, clearly, um, uh, usually the Reserve Bank doesn't allow uh, real estate mm. companies in this, but we need to get into that. Real sector mm. cooperatives, you know, people who, uh, who have cooperatives for, uh, say, um, uh, mm. you know, um, a marketing cooperative, a mm. milk cooperative, mm. those kinds of guys. Real sector, not okay. financial cooperatives. Okay. Uh, and those are the large, largely the guys who are also there in the draft guidelines. Mm. Uh, the promoter can't tie up with the bank hmm. but the banks of course capital market exposure uh, its exposure will be limited though I don't exactly know what the limitation will be it's according hmm. to 192 of the BR Act so hmm. the bank will have a minority stake at, at best uh, in a payment bank and uh, the promoter groups should of course pass the fit and proper test okay. so uh, they should not have had any uh, uh, instance of being pulled up by regulation that's hmm. not mentioned here hmm. but that's RBI's understanding of fit and proper what it can do is again what the draft had said they can only accept demand deposits hmm. they can't make loans hmm. uh, and uh, they can also issue debit cards not credit cards again because credit cards would tantamount to a hmm. loan they can arrange payments and remittance facilities hmm. so that is expected to be the biggest job of uh, uh, the bank uh, uh, you can the payment bank can also be a business correspondent for another bank mm. and it can distribute uh, non-risky products like insurance products and mutual fund products that's mm. the uh, scope of their activities mm. where can they put the money that they get okay by the way the de deposits should not be more than one lakh per person okay. per customer mm. and what can they do with the money uh, they can uh, they have to maintain CRR mm. so four percent of the deposits will go as cash reserve ratio mm. uh, um, at, at a minimum of 75 percent will have to be in SLR Mm. which is really government bonds mm. and of less than one year maturity mm. and uh, uh, they can keep a maximum of 25 percent in other uh, banks mm. just for operational purposes you, know, you have to draw checks for salaries and things like that the capital requirement will have to be 100 crores and this is important leverage ratio okay. how much deposits can you take for your capital if you have 100 crores you can take 33.3 times as deposits okay. so you can maximum your AU, your uh, assets under management would be 3300 mm -hmm. or 3330 3, 3, okay. that's the maximum you can take as deposits so obviously more than 100 crore will be as paid up equity promoters have to keep at all times a minimum of 40 percent mm -hmm. of the shareholding at least for the first five years foreign shareholding as per anyway whatever we know we know very well now after HDFC bank what is the foreign shareholding allowed in private sector banks uh, those are largely the uh, uh, procedures mm -hmm. last date for application Jan 16th mm. uh, an uh, external advisory committee of uh, uh, financial ex finance experts former bankers chartered accountants will mm. be set up they will vet and evaluate and recommend to the Reserve Bank Reserve Bank will have the final authority okay. to uh, decide who gets the license and who doesn't get okay, okay uh, we have the first guest joining us I'm sorry I'm interrupting you because I just want to get the expert in Ashwin Parekh has joined us on the phone line mr. Parekh uh, if you heard all that I said uh, what is your sense? Uh, who will be? Will it be supermarket chains? Will it be NBFCs? Will it be uh, telecom companies? Who will apply? Well, I mean, I am seeing that uh, uh, the guidelines have been a little more liberal compared to what we were expecting at one point in time. Uh, I mean, and therefore, uh, to all the three constituents, I mean, that is to the telecom companies, to the uh, supermarket chains mm. and uh, also to the NBFCs. I mean, all the three segments, uh, this may be uh, of some interest. The only question, you know, that keeps on now when I look at the guidelines and I look at the leverage ratio, uh, the question that comes to my mind, Letha, is uh, how will the financial viability be established of such entities mm. if these entities are going to work purely out of, you know, the interest income received and... Uh, uh, I mean, on the on the SLR, I mean, which is yes, sir, there, 75. There is no interest, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, prescription. 
No, true. Mm. But but my submission is that let's say if the on-demand deposit can be only up to one lakh of rupees, yeah. then the balance deposit is going to be savings deposits or fixed deposits. Yeah. Now in a such a in a such a scenario, you know, mm. if uh, these entities have to compete with the existing banking structure. Mm. You know, with the existing banks who already provide a certain, uh, uh, let's say, there is already a framework yeah. of interest rates for saving accounts and for FD accounts. Uh, in such a scenario, getting income of that order from out of just the SLR investments, you know, is a sir, question. Sir, they can also one minute, sir. They can also uh, have payment services, and they can yeah. do remittance services. So these can yeah. be paid services, right? Yeah, these are going to be fee based. I mean, I entirely agree with your point. Mm -hmm. You know, so basically, what may happen is therefore that let's say after a certain period, maybe four or five years or six years, you know, after the infrastructure for, I mean, you know, if you are a payments bank, you have to create infrastructure in the sense you have to create points of contact, you know, uh, uh, at various locations from where let's say remittances and payments transactions can be can be collected okay so i mean from that point of view if there is going to be an investment in infrastructure uh in terms of building up let's say the network and building up the the, the points of contact mm. to my mind the viability of such entities you know will happen perhaps at a later stage i mean compared to let's say a commercial bank or a strictly a universal okay. bank so that's because of the lending margins i mean okay. basically like nothing else but uh, if i on the other hand look at anybody who's going to apply for it and looks at it as a marginal approach mm -hmm. that is if it's an additional income if a telecom company is already into i mean it's, it has the infrastructure for example okay. and so many contact points then it makes a little more yeah sense. so for them it is just uh, stickiness of customers so you think that those who have a viable business going will want yep. to get in as to get stickiness of customers but whether yep. a standalone payment bank will make money is uh, something you doubt therefore so exactly so therefore nbfcs who do not have very strong branch network or very strong uh, let's say presence of uh, points of contact may uh, may find it a little difficult to establish viability there. okay uh, so you don't expect uh, too many applications now or will all the applications come from uh, payment uh, from telecom companies well i mean see the problem with the telecom companies in the super chains at this point in time you know is that they have their own business mm. telecom for example with 2g 3g and 4g auctions coming up mm. they have oh, to keep aside capital money. you know even super chain people are under tremendous pressure on account of the real estate rates at this point in time yeah so we I had mean, mr biani telling us that he would be very interested though he said he may be more interested in a small bank but uh, yeah. he did express interest in uh, some banking activity he was not very taken by the payment bank i would assume because it, you can't give loans uh, uh, mr yeah. uh, 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 mr parik just hang in there we are getting some yeah. more guests joining us shinjini kumar of pwc india is with us shinjini um, uh, i know it, it only a rapid look at the rules uh, what's your sense uh, mr parik wasn't sure that it's going to be viable for a standalone business um you know my i'm i'm not looking at it as a individual bank and how they will profit uh, from this which which will also happen but what i think the whole game is about is changing the banking ecosystem and bringing non customers of traditional banks into the banking framework and if that has to happen it's a matter of how fast we that ecosystem scales up mm. and therefore how everybody benefits from it so payment banks are going to be the front end of that uh, sort of uh, uh, critical mass and and so they will over over a period of time get more focused on the customer side of it and then there will be multiple players that will come up to develop that ecosystem so today what's happening is that the payment players are having to create their own ecosystem yeah. and therefore they are more focused around the certain segment of population where they play in the multiple ecosystem spaces mm -hmm. what will happen over a period of time if there is enough scale is that multiple people multiple payment banks will take care of the front end and the back end will come up through that competitive collaborative sort of structures so b2b businesses will come up and then people will specialize and then that whole ecosystem will begin to get profitable for for everyone okay. so my initial hypothesis is that if there are many foreign bank many uh, payments banks that cover the the ecosystem and bring non customers into the system it will be a profitable business model for everyone if it's just one or two and they need to create their own ecosystem then it may not be a profitable venture for any of them that's that's the way i have always looked at it okay but uh, you would you see a multiplicity of telecom companies is wanting to get into this uh, uh, and that being the starting point shinjini 
see, for telecom companies, it's a natural, uh, you know, sort of uh, contiguity business. So when we think about what's the easiest distribution channel, the mobile is the most, you know, visible representative of that. So it's, it's in that sense, it becomes very attractive for them to think about it. But I don't think that that's the only segment that should uh, or will be able to uh, uh, create this business. I think there are there's a need for uh, different types of uh, players to build this business so that, again, we are able to capture different uh, utilities, different contiguities, different cost structures. If it's just one type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, players that are playing to that space, then I, I, I don't think that... Uh, uh, you know that we will get the full benefit out okay. of this model again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Parekh, what's your sense? Uh, will the first applicants be telecom? Uh, will it make sense for, say, uh, a Biani to apply for this? Well, actually, you see, once again, I've always maintained. You know, I mean, uh, we can talk about the demand part of it. See, we were attempted business. I mean, we were attempted inclusion through business correspondent model earlier. We were attempted inclusion through even no frill accounts. Now, this is the third attempt that the regulator and the government is making. You know, uh, my sense is, you know, the demand part is well established. I understand that when you create that ecosystem, you know, the question is who's going to come forward and mm, create that, exactly. that ecosystem. And uh, there, I believe, you know, I think we may not necessarily be looking at it, even when the guidelines describe, you know, NBFCs and the others who can really come forward who are eligible, I, I believe, you know, that uh, maybe we'll find service providers coming forward, maybe we'll provide, you know, other set of, we may, we may find other set of people coming forward and applying for this. Somehow or the other, I believe that for telecom people and for real estate people, uh, maybe the timing is not appropriate. On one side, they have their investments, you know, to worry about in, in the in their own sectors. You know, so I mean, these are some of the concerns that I have. Uh, see, for someone like Mr. Biani, for example, without of course getting into any names, or it makes a huge sense because of the chain. He has a huge presence, you know, mm. and with several uh, uh, let's say outlets uh, at various points. So, I mean, for someone like him, you know, mm. who's got large let's say super chains uh, throughout the country then it's a different story altogether yeah but uh, yeah what he says let's assume he has a crore customers or 10 lakh customers uh, would not giving them a card and trying to get them into get, getting an account and making their purchases and uh, offering other kinds of services be attractive to him it would be. I mean, I entirely agree. I entirely really agree mm -hmm. that for such, uh, let's say, entities, it would be a very attractive proposition. And I thought somewhere, you know, that postal department mm. will be perhaps the, the most eligible candidate. You know, I mean, of course, depending on how the government decides on the whole thing uh, between the two ministries. But I thought for the, the, the department of post, this is perhaps the best uh, possible uh, opportunity, I would okay. say. Well, there is, uh, again, that fit and proper clause anyways, uh, uh, do you think, Sinjini, that will mean that some of the established players will again have problems passing the fit and proper test? After our last time around for that universal bank license from a basket of about 25 big applicants, uh, uh, only two were found fit and proper or whatever uh, 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 passed the test, so to speak. Yeah, you know, one of the things, of course, fit and proper is very important because we are talking about banks and financial services. But at the same time, we are talking about a business model whose risk profile is very different from the universal bank. And the purpose for releasing these banks into the system is also very different. So the, if the purpose is to sort of experiment and innovate and collaborate and create a, 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 a sort of a, a huge ecosystem, then I think being, uh, of course, it, it has to be fit and proper. But it's not that if this country has only, you know, two or three. I mean, I hope that that's not the case, that we have only two or three people that are fit and proper to run a, a payments bank with a limited risk model. So, so I am not so sure that that, that should be a constraint. Shinjani, Mr. Parikh was making a point that telecom companies, because of the kind of uh, capital issues that they have and the fact that they have to apply for the upcoming auctions, could be a concern for them actually going ahead and applying for the license. Is that a concern for you as well? Well, I, I see that See the thing is that 100 crore is, uh, in that sense, not a very big uh, uh, wow. capital requirement for the large telcos. Yeah. But, uh, but the more important thing is that uh, you, you have to take a longer term view of the business and understand if you are a 40% shareholder and mm. who, who are the right partners. So what is the business you're building? Uh, what you, is the benefit so that it brings uh, you? So you, I'm not sure you, you expect JVs. That, yeah. Do you expect uh, I telecoms and uh, maybe banks will tie up? Who will tie up? Telcos and NBFCs can tie up? If you, if you go back and see all the friction that we have been seeing in the bank telecom space on sharing of uh, 
spectrum and USSDs and uh, you know both complaining about each other. Yeah. I think the the JVs make a lot of sense to if we if we have to think about benefit to well, them. I can tell you that when I uh, interviewed Mr. Par, uh, Mr. Uh, Aditya Puri uh, a few months back, he was not interested in setting up a payments bank or uh, being party to it. His point yeah. was, let me see how it works. Only then. Yeah. So uh, from the bank side, I didn't see interest. But one could yeah. always perhaps uh, see interest from uh, the uh, you know telco telco side uh, or uh, a supermarket chain side, uh, simply because the bank has that kind of uh, experience. Uh, Mr. Parikh, what would be your take? JVs with commercial exactly. banks? No, see, basically, see, I mean, it all depends on how the banks will now view, you know, the new set of payment banks. Uh, if they view them as competitors, for instance, you know, or just service providers, you know, then uh, why would they really participate as a as a as a as JV partners? I mean, that's a question that keeps on coming up, you know, again and again to my mind. We have an existing universal banking system, which has established its own uh, sort of you know uh, uh, architecture and, and its own approach to payments. It works with the service providers. But the prime responsibility of owning the customers and looking at the QIC of customers is entirely with the banking system. Now, if they form joint venture partnerships, then the ownership of customers will become an issue at some stage, you know. So, I mean, I believe the moot question, I mean, before mm -hmm. I would say whether they will do or not, how will the banks view the new payments banks, you know, and, and, and various proposals that will come from such entities to become their partners? To my mind, the existing banking structure, you know, is also one of the, in addition to the viability, is also one of the challenges for the payments banks. Okay. Uh, would you think that, you know, a, a group like AV Birla would be interested? They have a, a, a great NDFC business and a great telco business. Oh, they would. I mean, see, I'll tell you. I mean, there will be several. I mean, if I look at, let's say, the Tatas uh, would people have who are Tatas, Bajaj, you know, I mean, those who have several touch points, for example, mm. uh, through the dealership network or through their, they can certainly evaluate. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's an open game. Even Mahindra's will certainly because they were substantially good, a large and performing Tata's also NBFC. have, yeah, Tata's, Tata's also. also. Tata's also have a, a you know, a, a supermarket kind of uh, setup. I mean, they, uh, they are in it not as big, but they are in it. Uh, so you... Uh, well, no. they have everything actually, you know. No, no. They have telco, they have uh, supermarket, they have, you know, in their, in their, in the group, I mean, basically. Okay. Would, will there be problems in the sense, uh, since the, uh, the, the Tata's withdrew their application in the first place, uh, from the old universal bank license because uh, all the NBFC, uh, all the lending activity had to come only within the licensed bank entity and they said that you know, we have an NBFC in Kenya and in Africa uh, to lend to the, uh, uh, the car companies and truck companies over there so we can't comply with that rule. That is why they had pulled out their uh, license. Since uh, yeah. this will not be an issue over here, uh, do you yeah. think, you know, say for instance the likes of a Shiram Transport will be interested? Yeah, see, Eva, once again, I mean, you know, these are, are excellent uh, uh, candidates, you know, for uh, taking a look at, at least the guidelines and taking a look at the viability and the possibility, you know, of, uh, I mean, whether it becomes a part of their natural. But they don't have to surrender anything. They don't have to really eventually merge their NBFC portfolio of, uh, let's say, either truck finance in one case or, you know, microfinance in the other. They don't have to really merge it with. So, so many names come to my mind, even including LNT Finance. There are so many good names, mm. you know, uh, which are, which can evaluate and come forward, you know. So, I mean, it's not that, that, that there is going to be a, uh, I mean, eventually if, the model gets established mm. and if uh, people see that there is i mean even let's say at the end of four or five years or six years you know there is something for them i mean just a fee income for example with the number of transactions that they handle uh, both i mean repatriation uh, sorry the the remittances sorry and the payments then 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 there can be a viability establishment basically but the entities we just talked about mm. could all be looking at it very closely i am confident okay so there would be a rush of applications you think Rush, I mean, I don't know. I mean, because uh, if there is a certain kind of, uh, let's say, uh, a window, I mean, a time window within which the applications have to be made, I mean, one has to go through these guidelines. And uh, if the committee is going to look at all the applications all at one time, then perhaps there might be a rush. Otherwise, uh, people may just evaluate, you know, on their own, create their own business models or their business plans. And then, 
I mean, so it depends on what is the approach that the guidelines have taken. I have yet to study the guidelines. But if they are, uh, let's say, on tap kind of a licensing process, uh, which, of course, the governor had also mentioned in the past on a few occasions, then uh, it's, it may be a different scenario. Then people, they don't, they don't be, may not be a rush, but people will evaluate and then they come forward. So uh, on Jan 16th, how many licenses do you think, or how many applications do you think uh, uh, the RBI would receive? Uh, well, if we had about 25 Universal Bank applications, 25 or 26, one of the two numbers, yeah. then I suppose you can't expect more than 40, 45 for this one as well. 25 for this as well? 40, 45. Oh, 40, 45. That's quite yeah, a bit. I mean, you are including so you would have telcos uh, uh, perhaps telcos. and who? The supermarket chains? And NBFCs perhaps. NBFC. Sorry? NBFCs? NBFCs, okay. I, I'm all right. Uh, NBFCs uh, want to lend. This is not a lending activity. So I wonder what will the synergy be for them? Uh, will no. they be allowed in or how will they demarcate their lending activities? Well, actually, you see, I mean, at one point in time, the Usha Thorat Working Group, you know, was a big challenge for the NBFCs. I mean, it was almost leading to a point where, you know, uh, very few NBFCs would have really uh, uh, continued in the in the in the system. Now things have changed, you okay. know, with the new guidelines out. So, I mean, this is one of the businesses that they can take out. You know, they can con they can they can conduct. So, it's not going to conflict with either the lending business on one side. I mean, the portfolio that they possess. In fact, because they will be there for more than five years, and because they have already been uh, supervised by the regulator. So, from the uh, due diligence point of view, also fit and proper point of view, also, you know, they may find themselves uh, well equipped to 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 really uh, uh, you know respond to to the requirements, basically. All right. Uh, Mr. Parikh, thank you very much for that exhaustive analysis uh, of uh, uh, the, uh, the conditions and the rules that will govern payment banks. Thank you very much for joining us.